Leaders and delegates from over 70 countries met last week to set targets to fight climate change. Once again, they voiced the need for swift action and promised to reduce emissions in the coming decades. But the immediate steps to take were less clearly laid out. It's five years since the Paris Agreement was adopted. And as economies cope with the financial impact of COVID-19, many are now investing in high carbon activities. Money, both when it comes to the cost of change and deciding where to invest it, could be a major tool in fighting for Earth's environment. To get her perspective on that, we're joined now by one of this year's winners of the Goldman Environmental Foundation Prize, seen by many as the Nobel Prize for the Environment, Ms. Lucy Vinson from Reclaim Finance. Thanks so much for your time. Can I start by asking you to tell us a bit more about the work that you were awarded for getting banks to stop investing in coal-related industry? Uh, what does that entail and how hard was it to convince them? Ooh, um, it wasn't pretty simple. Um, so the work was about pushing banks and investors and insurers to adopt policies to stop the expansion of the coal sector and to also actively support its phase out. Um, when we started working on finance, um, it was a a strategic decisions. Uh, our long-term objective is a phase out of all fossil fuels and considering new fossil fuel projects, new oil, new gas or new coal projects needs financing from banks and investors and they also need coverage from insurance companies. It might be simpler to stop these projects to tackle the financing and coverage behind them, uh, mainly because we do have thousands of fossil fuel projects uh, operating in the world and new projects uh, in the pipeline, but we will find always the same dozens of financial institutions behind them. So we decided to go after the banks and the financing industry behind the coal industry. Uh, as at the beginning when we started, no financial institutions had uh, restricted its support to the coal industry. So before today in France, we have around like a little bit less than 20 significant uh, financial institutions that have a robust coal exit policy. Um, but when we started, uh, no one had it. So we, we didn't make it at once, like it was one step after another. Um, first pushing a bank to withdraw from a project and then to commit to stop finance Financing all projects and then tackling the financial services to the companies. And to do that, uh, we use different arguments. Uh, it's true that the financial institutions usually think in the short term and based on economic and financial figures. So we explain to them that in the long run, these decisions were might not be the best. And we also explain to them and expose to them the human and social and environmental cost of supporting the fossil fuel industry, in starting with the coal industry, which, which is the biggest source of greenhouse gas emissions and also the biggest uh, source of air pollution and cause every year 800,000 premature deaths. So we explain that to them and we show that behind this impacts, there is a reputational risk for these financial institutions to be exposed as being responsible for the climate crisis. Mm. So in the end, did it come down to them also seeing the financial the impact they could face with investing in, in coal-related industry? Because let's face it, you know, banks, uh, financial institutions, they're about making money and investing in what they'll get their returns on. They do, especially as an investor, but as a bank, uh, they might also not be directly exposed to this type of risk. So obviously, the financial arguments is um, is important, and uh, especially considering that uh, right now already renewable energies are more profitable than coal. But there is another financial argument right now of also being exposed to the coal sector as a financial institution that is that has a big reputation and uh, and brand. You need to to show up, and today your clients and your staff 
and especially the workers and the talented people that you want to hire tomorrow, they will care about what a bank does or does not on climate. And there is a direct also financial impact for being exposed as supporting the coal industry and its human and social and climate impacts. Okay, so some French banks and French financial institutions have heeded the call that will already have an impact. Uh, but are they alone in this? Are we seeing this replicated internationally? So, so far, the policies are the last ones, the last bit of policies that have been adopted in, in France are already showing, um, are already being replicated uh, overseas. So the bank, Italian bank Unicredit has adopted a policy which is very similar to the one adopted by the French banks. Uh, so that's a great, uh, it's a great movement. However, internationally, the policies on coal remain very weak. We have today more than 230 policies adopted by financial institutions on coal but our research shows that it's not a question of having or not having a policy on coal. It's a question of the quality. And today the quality is not strong enough to really prevent the expansion of the coal sector and support its phase out. So it's going to be one of the, our main challenge in the coming year. Uh, do you feel optimistic as things stand? There is a movement. Um, it's too early to 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 to, to see, but uh, in the last weeks we have been seeing like an increasing number of financial institutions committing to adopt uh, to reach uh, carbon neutrality by 2050. So the issue with that is that it's a very long-term goal, and but to reach this very long-term goal short-term actions with immediate impacts are needed. And so it's too, too, too soon to say, but if these financial institutions that are committing themselves to align with the Paris Agreement climate goals and achieve carbon neutrality by 2050 are serious, they will stop supporting new fossil fuel projects. And very finally, you know, there had been financial tools, if you like, when coming to fight uh, climate change. One of them that had been used was these climate credits where uh, basically richer companies or countries could buy their carbon neutrality. You know, uh, how do you see that uh, issue today? So that's not really something I, I do work on. I... I clearly, I mean, the financial industry has been pushing for um, carbon markets for a long time. It's not really the case today. I think uh, this type of uh, mechanisms are might be needed at national level or in Europe, for example, but um, uh, like a tax more be made. But a, a market where credits are being sold, um, uh, I think, um, gonna not make it up. Um, we are going to gonna fail if we are following this uh, this mechanism. It has been tested already in Europe, and we show um, and the, the experience we had show that uh, it's not working, and it's very uncertain that it's going to work tomorrow. A tax could be working, but it will be needed uh, at European level and not at world level because mm. it's never going to be. Um, uh, it's going to take much longer uh, that we can afford to to put it in place. Lucy Ibinson of Reclaim Finance, thanks so much for taking time out and telling us about uh, those initiatives that have convinced some major banks to change the way they invest.